OK, next up, we have Kevin Joyner, uh, Director of Planning and Insight for Crowd. Um, he is going to be talking about the Kevin Joyner and George Clooney Guide to Lasting Relationships. I'm going to tell you a tale of two singles. These are gentlemen both looking to meet someone new and maybe for something more. We have Ed. Now, Ed thinks that women exist to be driven through a funnel and converted. He believes that if you bang away for long enough at enough targets, then one by one they will capitulate. On the other hand, we have George. Now, he's just a nice guy. He believes in genuine relationships, and he'd rather spend quality time with fewer people than play a numbers game. Now, Ed prefers directory services. He likes them because he can filter and prioritize and plan his targeting tactics. George, on the other hand, employs expert, an expert dating agency. They help him to take a deep look at himself and think about what are his best qualities, what's gone wrong in the past, what's gone right, what are his best friends like, and why does he like them? Now, unfortunately for Ed, he spends absolutely ages sending messages and leaving voicemails. Uh, he, he finds that lots of targets have already found a partner because he realizes the same directory service is available to everyone on the market. Even worse, half his contact details are out of date and eventually the service just stops working. George, on the other hand, has a series of proper dates. His connections are personal. Many don't lead to a second date, but he always learns something about himself and about his date. Soon, he even realizes that he can predict where the date is going even moments after it's just begun. Ultimately, Ed is sad and alone. His peers are settling down and he doesn't know where it's all gone wrong. George, on the other hand, has found love and loyalty and respect. So third party data, don't be a slimy pest. Realize that the data is a commodity and so are the tools that we use to activate it. And in an environment of increasing privacy, it means decreasing effectiveness. First party data, on the other hand, is about knowing yourself and your relationships. It's your unique asset and it gives you a competitive edge. You can take this opportunity to focus on the customer experience and valuable relationships and you can even predict LTV. So don't be like Ed. Get out of the faceless numbers game. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Kevin. Captivating storytelling. So third, pay, third party data is completely dead. Forget about it. It's all about first party. Is that the message? We, we, will, we will always use it as a tool. It shouldn't be our priority anymore. We will test layering it on to the way that we reach audiences. But, you know, uh, its usefulness and its value is in decline, especially for uh, measuring and acting on, our, on uh, post impression mm -hmm. uh, information about sort of how users have interacted and seen and reacted to your, uh, the impression of your ads. Okay. And first party data, I guess, different sectors have had different successes in building it. If you're a FMCG client, we had a lot of them yesterday, you obviously don't necessarily have a lot of those assets. What advice do you give to brands in that space about how they start to think about collecting it or working with other parties to enrich their data? Think about how your brand can become a service and something that people subscribe to. You know, like there's several razor and shaving products that have done this and really have shown FMCG uh, brands and products how, how they can lead the way. Um, people even subscribe to FMCG products on Amazon. Now, your opportunity there is a bit siloed, but you can see how there are opportunities in a kind of online world for yeah. an FMCG product to become an experience. And, and that's the beginning of first party data, love, loyalty and respect. OK, nice. And we had live ramp on um, an hour or so ago talking about data partnerships and second party data, which doesn't get that much airing. Do you think that that will be a growing area with different brands joining their data sets to learn more about each other's customers? It's worth exploring. I find it like a little bit of a, a workaround. I'm, it's certainly worth exploring, but you, you need to look at a vendor in this space and just check what they're proposing around control of your data. 
you know, so, some of these vendors are encouraging you to onboard your data and combine it. But the insights and the action, you know, is contained within that platform and, mm -hmm. and born out of that platform. And really, that's like, that, that's not taking advantage of the asset that your business data could be. So, you know, these things have to be judged from one case to the next. But that, that's, the, that's the main area of concern for me. Okay, interesting. And before we finish, what would be a, your last takeaway for people when it comes to preparing for a first party first world? You know, I work with some advertisers and marketing teams who don't even know what data they have available to them. I would um, go on a sort of data discovery mission, mm -hmm. find out who the stakeholders are, what the data is, what systems it's on, where are the flaws, what's the quality of the data. And in doing that, you know, examining the joins and the, the opportunities to merge data sets, in doing that, you'll be flooded with ideas about how to activate the data. Excellent. So that would, that's where I would start. Great advice, a good place to leave it. Thank you for joining us, Kevin. Thanks very much.